In 2012, two families left the city along with the conveniences of modern American living. It's today that these two families have relocated themselves in the mountains of the American Ozarks to build for themselves a more sustainable and fulfilling lifestyle. We are American Homestead! This week on An American Homestead, we start off with the Roku Channel giveaway and announce our winner. Then we have a special treat for you next. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit us online at anamericanhomestead.com. Hello, welcome to An American Homestead. A few months ago, we advertised a giveaway and promised that we would announce the winner on our first episode of season two. Unfortunately, only one person could win, and that was Cell Soul Ruiz. And if that's you, this 72-hour kit from Valley Food Storage will be sent to you. We will send you an email, and you can send us your address. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to An American Homestead. How we're going to kick off Season 2 is like this. I want to introduce to you for this first episode, my neighbors. I was contacted last year by some folks who live in Florida and they were looking for land in the Ozarks. And uh, they contacted me and were looking for land and I told them, you know what, I have 100 acres for sale right next door to me. And they came out, they looked at it, they fell in love with it, and they moved here. And they didn't wait to, to take the time to build, go through the process of of building their land you know from a far away distance uh, they basically sold what they have and just moved out on the land and decided to rough it for a certain amount of time while they were building their new homestead and it's a pretty extraordinary story and it's a pretty extraordinary family and so what i wanted to do for this first episode is introduce you to introduce to you to them and uh and, and you guys can see you know uh, just what it takes sometimes for people who are just sick and tired of the rat race sick and tired of of spending all of their wheels uh, trying to upkeep you know, the life that they have back in the modern 21st century America and just wanted to go ahead and get out and, and, and build you know, a new homestead, a new life for their family. And I think you'll really enjoy seeing them and meeting them. I, I know I have. I've, gotten, I've had a real joy getting to know them. And so uh, I want to introduce, for this first episode, we're going to spend the time getting to know them and their homestead and the plans they have for the future. All right, stick with us. Matt. I'm Tara. You'll probably meet our four daughters also. And yeah, we live in a tent. It's uh, 13 feet wide and 27 feet long. It is our mansion in the woods. So we have moved to the Ozarks uh, about 1,200 miles away from our former home in Florida. We've traded the beach for the mountains, and we now have 95 acres. I think we were what we call our suburban homesteading days in Florida. We had 10 acres there, and we began practice homesteading, I would say, for probably, it was about four years, and we just started um one thing at a time let's try chickens so we got chickens and let's try bees and we got bees and let's try gardening and we were doing all these things and uh, we learned a lot during that time but um it was a struggle because a lot of it got thrown in her lap because i was working all the time and i didn't have the time to devote to all those things so a lot of the things that we started didn't finish well because nobody had the time to devote to it. So we made a drastic move. Mm -hmm. 
we wanted to get onto the land um, as soon as we could and we kind of said um, you yeah, know we can do a tent for four to six months before we have time to build something a little more permanent if you want to make a change and you want to get out you'll take drastic measures we were talking the other day that even this is not that hard compared to what people before us have done I mean we have generators we have gas grills we have all kinds of modern conveniences even living this way the pilgrims came on a boat they hardly had anything you know people before us have really homesteaded this is still easy compared to what they did in the past it's kind of like all the things that get sold to us to make our lives easier and simpler end up creating a web of bondage where you have to keep working to maintain those things mm -hmm. and when you cut those off you find out oh, yeah. I didn't really need that after all you know so the question we got a lot when we said we were leaving was what are you gonna do for a living how are you gonna how are you gonna live I made a good income before and to make a drastic change people always you know the first fear is oh how are you gonna survive well, aside from growing our own foods and raising our own animals and meats and things for our own survival, there's still things that you have to have. You have to have money to put uh, gas in the car or car insurance. There's, there's things you need money for. So here's the deal. You can live with a lot less than you have. We Americans especially are pansies we think we need all these comforts <laughs> and we get we're so soft we can do with we can do without of 85 percent of the stuff that we're used to now and you can maintain um, a comfortable living on a very small income if you do it right we're not there yet but the biggest thing is get out of debt. If you're out of debt, you can maintain a lifestyle that's comfortable without having a huge income. And we're still waiting for some things to sell in Florida and button some things up so that we can finally be at that place. We're not totally there yet. I don't feel totally free like we've cut all the, all the things, but my biggest advice is get out of debt because that is gonna give you the freedom to to jump off somewhere and do something like this. So we are inside. All right, this for the past couple of months has been the wood storage area, which is necessary in the tent. You have to stay warm. We spent a lot of time the last couple of months around this area. To stay warm and this has been for cooking um, I found that pretty much anything you can make in a oven you can do on this wood stove with a Dutch oven it's, it's fabulous it works out great this is a little kitchen area that Matt set up for me and I'll heat water on the stove um, and then I have my little dish pans here and this is this is a constant this is um honestly not usually this organized and clean um but it does the job it does the job the dishes and then as you go over here um, you know we have to have our schooling things available at all times and um we are doing school in here and what we have i'm gonna move over here what we have are two futons and the bunk bed so we have space for our family and a guest and we have had grandma come to stay um, and back in this corner is where we have our composting toilet and um this is a little curtain for <laughs> privacy um there are six of us in the family so there's a lot of clothing just a lot of things a lot of school books and we just kind of have rearranged as we go what this is working this isn't working and you just you just make it work and 
I am one that likes everything to be put in its place and I've had to let that go a little bit. This is the closet for a few of the kids and um, the plastic is really great for in the tent because there is a lot of condensation and um, so we've been thankful that we we didn't know about that in, beforehand, but we've been glad that most things are in plastic and um, so we don't have to worry about everything getting soggy. We have school books. We all love to read, so this, we would we sh shove as many books in here as we can. And, you know, we have little ones and we need toys and you just have to make space for those things. It's life and... and you know, I don't want to feel like I'm camping for months. We're living, but it really is camping. And, you know, you want to take the fun from camping, but I, you know, I don't think everyone needs to stay in their jammies all day, every day. So it's it's finding the balance, and I'm sure every family, as they do this, um, there's things that are going to work for you that that don't for someone else. And, and, you know, it's not a competition. You do the best you can and you work things out the way you can and um, you know you don't have to do something the way someone else is you just take what you can learn from them and add what you find works and and you can do it, it it's it's really enjoyable the family time being this close together um, yes there's times when we wish we had our little corners to go to our rooms where we could go close the door but um, for the most part, there's a lot of good memories being made. At the same time, as something very necessary is happening in order to go to the next step. We have some food storage over here and our water, which is very important, the water filter. Um, that's really about it in here. Um, very this good. is home. <laughs> So um, once it warmed up enough for us to shower outside, I threw together this uh, little enclosure real quick with some scrap lumber we had laying around. And basically um, it's just the good old camp shower bag here. And we <clears throat> heat water on the, over the fire or um, we have a gas grill that we can also heat water on. And um, this is where we get cleaned up. After a hard day's work, it feels good to clean up. And uh, if, you, if you have a shower and a good night's sleep, uh, you, you can uh, face about anything, so. I've been beekeeping about three years or so. During that time, uh, I learned a lot and I still have a lot to learn, but uh, it's something that fascinates me. I was kidding earlier that I, I'm a big corporation now. I've got uh, thousands and thousands of little employees working for me now, and uh, hopefully we get uh, lots of honey uh, as a result. And not to mention the benefit of all the pollination that goes on in our gardens and the fruit trees around. So. Um, I, I would consider myself still, I'm, I'm one step above rookie, but um, I, I uh, have done it enough to know what not to do now. <laughs> My mistakes in the past have been um, not checking on them enough. Um, I was busy uh, with work and the, the demands of modern life and uh, the bees. Um, I really neglected and um, you don't want to check on them too much but you need to keep tabs on them to see what they're doing and they'll give you clues to uh, how the hive is is operating they'll show you signs of thriving by um, moving higher into the hive and producing more honeycomb and more places for um, brood and more places for honey storage um, they'll show you signs of thriving by lots of bees coming into the hive with nectar and pollen. 
uh, but if you've neglected them, they'll be showing you signs of that as well. There could be an infestation of uh, different mites, uh, different uh, bugs, um, uh, mice. Uh, there's just if if uh, the hive is not strong, uh, an intruder can come in and take over real quick, and they can the intruder can take out the honeycomb, take out the the queen, uh, do lots of damage. So you'll see signs of that if you're opening it up often. So one of my my mistakes in the past was not checking on them enough to keep tabs on when they were doing well and when they were doing bad. My family is involved in the beekeeping as well, not so much in this part over here with the hives, but when it comes time to harvesting, um, that's a bit of a chore. Um, once I get all the, the honey uh, supers off with the frames of honey in them, um, it's a process of uh, cutting the wax off of the honeycomb and uh, putting it into the extraction machine, which we spin out. And then um, there's a process of um, kind of mildly filtering the honey through cheesecloth, that's what we normally do, and then bottling it into jars. And um, my family has all uh, helped uh, with those parts of the process. Um, we've dabbled a little bit with uh, keeping some of the beeswax, and uh, my wife has made one candle so far out of that. So we've kind of begun dabbling with uh, using the beeswax for other purposes. There's so many other things you could get into, uh, soap making and lip balms and candle making, and uh, the list goes on and on. There's lots of products that you can produce as secondary to the honey. These hives that I've got here, um, it's gonna take them a while to get established. Uh, I'm hoping that toward the late summer that they will have uh, become strong enough to have a surplus of honey that we can have. And so I'm hoping that in the short term here we can, we can enjoy some honey later in the year. But I, I wanna be careful not to take too much um, so that they can overwinter. And then next year uh, we should, they should be uh, well established and uh, ready to, to rock and roll. And hopefully by then uh, we'll have a surplus of honey um, that we can share with friends. Um, honey is real, raw, unfiltered honey made from nectar of the plants and trees out here. Is uh, People pay a premium for that. So I'm not exactly sure what the future holds, but um, I, I could definitely see uh, expanding this operation a little bit to uh, supplement some of our income. Um, it's, and it's not just honey, there's many other ways you can venture out. You can capture the pollen and sell the pollen. Um, you can begin to raise queens and uh, start uh, small nucleus colonies to sell to people like these that I just installed in here. So there, there's multiple uh, streams of revenue that you can get with beekeeping. Um, I, I guess time will tell um, how far down that road we go. <laughs> It's an amazing process to, to watch uh, and uh, to, to play a small part in it, to just let them do their thing with minimal interruption and uh, it's good for them and good for us too. So. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Uh, so since the time of this filming, they have gone ahead and started construction on a big building that they're going to be using for part house, and then later on they'll be using it for a barn. Uh, but they've got a very nice structure up, and they're getting ready to move into it very soon. And uh, while they're living in that, they can make plans on building other infrastructure on their homestead, as well as a more permanent house. And so they're well on their way with their construction. But, you know, this is a family, again, who decide, you know what, I'm not going to wait. We're not going to try to do this long distance. We're just going to move there and get to work. And that's what they did. Anyway, I thought you would enjoy that. we got a lot of great stuff coming up for additional episodes in Season 2. We have chicken butchering. I want to show you our new solar dehydrator. We're planning on building a smokehouse. We're planning on uh, getting finally running water to the houses. And we're going to showcase all of those projects along the way in Season 2. All right, so stick around. We'll see you next time on American Homestead. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.
you've neglected them, they'll be showing you signs of that as well. Um, there, there could be a, an infestation of, gosh. <laughs> yeah, that thing flew up my nose. <laughs> I didn't get stung though. <laughs>